On July 4th, North Korea tested its first true intercontinental ballistic missile. The missile fired was the KN-14, or Wasong-14. Not much is known about the missile, but it appears to be similar to the KN-08. The missile only flew less than 600 miles, but it reached an altitude of over 1,700 miles. There are two reasons why they would launch a missile this high. First is because they do not have a range in which they can launch the missile. When the U.S. tests its ICBMs, they launch them westward, out over the Pacific Ocean, into an area called the Ronald Reagan Test Range. The Russians fire their missiles to the east to an area called the Kura Missile Test Range. North Korea does not have such a range, and it would risk war if they fired a missile out over countries like Japan. So to do a full test, burning the engines for the full duration, and testing the staging and separations, they needed to fire the missile straight up into the air. The second reason is to test the re-entry vehicle. A warhead re-entering the atmosphere will be traveling several thousand miles per hour. The friction in the atmosphere will slow it down, transforming its speed or kinetic energy into heat. The heat can reach temperatures of over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now to survive these temperatures, the warhead needs a special protective covering. By launching straight up into the air, North Korea can test the survivability of their warheads re-entering the atmosphere at similar speeds. A missile that can fly in a vertical launch to an altitude of 1,700 miles would be able to fly about 4,000 miles in distance if it is launched on an optimum trajectory, slightly farther if launched westward and shorter to the east due to the rotation of the Earth. On such a trajectory, the missile would reach an altitude of around 900 miles, it would have a flight time of about 35 minutes, and it would re-enter the atmosphere at speeds around 15,000 miles per hour. Another interesting thing about the missile is that it is shown to have a shroud or a fairing around the warhead. A fairing is typically used when whatever is being launched isn't aerodynamic and would create drag. There are a few reasons why missiles would have a fairing. Several modern ICBMs have fairings due to having multiple nuclear warheads inside. However, it is unlikely that North Korea has miniaturized its warheads to the point that it can fit multiple on one missile. One possible explanation is that North Korea may be equipping or planning to equip their missiles with decoys. Decoys are launched along with the real warhead and have the same characteristics. This makes defense a much more complicated matter as interceptor missiles will not know which one is the real warhead and which one are only the decoys. North Korea's missile program has been advancing at a slow but steady pace. They are currently estimated to have over 1,000 ballistic missiles of varying ranges. They have the shorter range Wasung-5, which is based on the Scud-B, it has a range of about 300 kilometers. The Wasung-6, based on the Scud-C, it has a range of about 500 kilometers. The medium range Nodong, which has a range of about 1,300 kilometers. The intermediate range Musadang, or the Wasung-10, it has a range of about 3,500 kilometers. And in the intercontinental ballistic missile category, they have the KN-08, it has a range stated to be around 9,000 kilometers. And now finally the KN-14, it has a range estimated to be at least 6,500 kilometers. When it comes to intercontinental ballistic missiles, the only defense that the U.S. has is the ground-based interceptor. The Patriot, THAAD, and the SM-3 cannot shoot down ICBMs. They just do not have the range or the speed to defend against them. The ground-based interceptor is based in Alaska and California, which is unsurprisingly right on the path a North Korean missile would take on its way to the U.S. So far, the system has been successful in destroying ballistic missiles on 10 out of 18 attempts, making it successful about 56% of the time. The U.S. currently has 36 of these interceptors operational, with plans for dozens more. In the event of a North Korean intercontinental ballistic missile attack on the U.S., three or four interceptors will be fired per incoming missile to increase the likelihood of a successful shootdown. It is likely that the U.S. would succeed in being able to shoot down a Korean missile, but if it turns out the KN-14 does have countermeasures and decoys, interception would be much more difficult.